So welcome again to the William Hill FWA podcast. A little bit different today. We're in Rubensteiner Street in St Petersburg. England will be here tomorrow ahead of Saturday's uh, third place player final, which unfortunately won't be the final. That will be on Sunday, Croatia, France, won't Steve? Yeah. Well, Steve Bates and the people here, we've been going through the tournament together. We've been looking at England. We've been soaking up the atmosphere in Russia. And uh, it's getting to a close, but it's been brilliant, isn't it? It has been brilliant. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, it all ended in disappointment last night. But I, I do honestly think that uh, once that disappointment subsides and given a bit of time, then obviously the, the full uh, level of achievement, achievement will be appreciated here, here by the by not only just uh, <laughs> the country at large, but also the players, what they have managed to achieve. Because I'm sure in their little bubble uh, at the moment, it's probably not fully sunk in what they've actually achieved. But it really was magnificent for them to get to the last four of the World Cup. Not obviously done that for uh, such a long time, 28 years. But here they were doing it in Russia and, and doing it um, in, in some style as well. Yeah. Obviously, it was disappointment uh, in, in Moscow last night. But listen, um, it was always sort of uh, possibly destined to end that way, uh, given the inexperience of this team. And, you know, to have won the World Cup would really have been something uh, extraordinary, really. And I think we've seen already on social media the players have been putting out their messages thanking everyone for their support back home, the support yeah. from the fans and the media, on TV, social media as well. They, they obviously, right, as you say, they've been in a bubble, but they, they have understood that there's been a whole country behind them and, and they, there's no recriminations. They, they've, they've, you know, they've gone as far as, well, beyond what we expect. Them. Absolutely, absolutely they have. You know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure not many people would have predicted them going to the semi-finals and, you know, having a really good chance to get to the final. And I think possibly that may be the disappointment when, yeah. when it all sinks in. Half an hour away, weren't they, really? That they yes. were very, very close and this was probably an extremely winnable game. They were, England weren't played off the park by Croatia by any means. There were very small margins that, at the end of the day, um, settled the game. Uh, one, one piece of luck, yeah. one ball that fell kindly for, for Mario Mandzukic, and, and, and that was it really. And um, you know, it wasn't as though we were completely outplayed uh, by a, a much superior team. I think there were elements that we can look at and learn from in the future yeah. going forward. I do think England's perhaps quality with the ball sometimes is questionable, and we maybe have to improve on that. We're clearly a very good set piece team. Yeah, again. Uh, again, uh, you know, uh, magnificent free kick by Kieran Trippier, who for me has been one of the stars of uh, not only England, this, but the whole tournament uh, uh, this time in Russia. Uh, but I think, yeah, once the dust settles, I think, you know, we will have to acknowledge that in certain areas our game perhaps did kind of break down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but that is something to improve on yeah. in the next two years. And if we learn the lessons of Russia 2018 to take into the Euros in two years' time, then I'm absolutely certain that, that the England team can be at this stage again in that tournament. Be nice to find a, a Modric or a Rakitic though, wouldn't it? Oh, listen, undoubtedly. I mean, those players are special players. And while we've got very good quality players, players of good technique, um, top draw players in many respects who play at the highest level of the Premier League and the Champions League. We are definitely missing the, the X factor of having a Luka Modric or an Avan Rakitic in the team, for sure. But um, going into Sunday's final, France are the favourites, uh, 11 to 10 I think, and Croatia 72 quite long odds. Obviously they've, France have had an extra day to prepare as well, so you see that being about right. Yeah, I would, I would say so. Look, uh, Croatia have had uh, a couple of grueling matches, you know, their previous game uh, prior to England went to the full distance to penalties. Uh, and, and of course, uh, England took, took them all the way through extra time uh, last night. So I'm sure there'll be probably fresher legs in the, in the French camp. And I think, um, listen, I, I, know, I know Croatia are on a mission to uh, uh, basically emulate their what their team did in, in 1998, which yeah. they've already yeah. done by getting to the final. Uh, but I'm sure there's a, an absolute huge degree of focus now and intensity in the French camp uh, for those players to match what their heroes did in 1998 yeah. when they hosted the World Cup. And again, quite a young side, they're going to learn, they're going to get better. Mbappe's on fire, isn't he? And there's players like Pogba and Maturi. Yeah. I've just seen the odds from William Hill here, they're already 4 to 1. For favourites for Euro 2020, so yeah. that, that reflects how well they've done and, and the guidance well, they've I, got. I, I can understand that, Jerry, because once again, they are a, a, a young, developing team who've got time and, and youth on their side. 
Uh, okay, they've got a few experienced heads in there as well, but predominantly they're a young team. And I think, you know, looking ahead a couple of years, and obviously that's a long time in football, you would think that maybe France and England could be at the latter stages of 2020 again because uh, the setup and makeup of both those teams is, is a young one and they'll have learned a heck of a lot from this experience. And I can understand perfectly why France would go into that final on Sunday as favourites because for me, um, they, they've shown that they are a quality team. And I think there's more to come from them yeah. as well. Yeah. I don't think they've hit full, full throttle at the moment. They've not reached top gear by any stretch of the imagination. And um, I think we might see them just do that um, on Sunday. Obviously, a final is always uh, reset with nerves and it's fraught with difficulties. But I think France do have the capability to really um, make a statement in Moscow yeah. on Sunday. Well, interestingly, in the latest odds now from William Hill, this is ahead of 2020, Spain, Germany and Belgium are all ahead of England. England 16, oh, sorry, 14 to 1. Fancy a cheeky pump. That would be a bad one to do at this stage. Absolutely. If you were looking ahead, uh, listen, I'm sure Gareth Southgate's going to stay in charge of the team. Um, uh, they, as I say, they'll have learned a heck of a lot from, from not just last night, but from the home tournament. We've now appeared to have grasped what it means to manage a tournament. Yeah. You know, we haven't really physically done that in the past. Certainly didn't do it in the last two tournaments. These boys have grasped that, and that's going to only make them stronger. Uh, for the tournaments ahead. <laughs> so, you mentioned Gareth Southgate. Another, a little cheeky odds come up from William Hill here. To be knighted, so Sir Gareth Southgate, by uh, the end of 2018-19, we've got eight to one. What do you think? <laughs> Listen, I'm not quite sure I can see Gareth being knighted on this occasion. If they would have won it, most certainly. I think they all probably would have been knighted, but uh, probably not on this occasion for Gareth. But what, what Gareth Southgate has done for me in this World Cup, He's kind of increased his stock and his reputation yeah. enormously because I think there was still some suspicions about him being the right man for England yeah. when he was appointed. He wasn't the first choice clearly because Sam Allardyce held the job and obviously lost it in unusual circumstances, should yeah. we say. Gareth was Johnny on the spot there and got the job. Uh, but really he's, he's, he's performed magnificently and I think he's surprised a lot of people with his thoughtfulness, his resourcefulness, his, his thinking, intelligent style. Also the way he manages players, Jerry. Yeah. I mean, you know, he took some really big decisions in the early stages of, of his tenure with England. Dropping Wayne Rooney, for instance. Well, that's one big one, wasn't it? Easing Wayne Rooney out of the international picture. You know, who'd have thought he was going to be the manager to do that? But he did it and did it successfully. And then he's found this beautiful blend within this squad and created this magnificent team spirit, which I think has done more than anything to carry the lads as far as they did get. And uh, he's a national hero now, obviously. Again, yes. a little odds from William Hill. Gareth to be in the top 10 boys' names for 2018, 4-1. What do you think? <laughs> well, listen, it's not kind of a, a trendy name, you would say, no. but listen, he's become a style icon with a waistcoat, yeah, so the waistcoat. who knows where it will end. I've got one at home, yeah. <laughs> Didn't bring it, unfortunately, I should have done, but who knows where it will end. Fantastic. Right, this is the William Hill podcast from Rubensteiner Street in St Petersburg. Keep coming back. We might have time for one more before this World Cup's over.